Hey, everybody, thank you for joining. It's a double bill day today. It's one of those days where there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I broke up videos today because some people just like crypto. They don't like macro. They don't like stocks. I'm going to try to segregate everything to give you what you it's want. one of those days where there's... So let's go. So this video today is about the breaking news that came out a few days ago, but all of a sudden all the crypto rags hit it today that Cardano wants Solana. And we're going to dig in. This isn't a video about Cardano, Solana, etc. It's really more a video about multi-chains, cross-chains, side-chains, inter-blockchains, whatever you want to call it, and how they're all different. And my good friend Paul Barron broke this news first a few days ago in a video. And uh, it was a great video. And I look forward to seeing Paul very, very, very soon. Now, again, Let's figure out what these different types of chains are, what Charles Hoskins' motivation possibly could be, and where the future lies. So let's jump in. We don't need a disclaimer today. As I mentioned, the story is simple. But this was the article that got everybody's attention and brought about a lot of questions. Um, and Cardano has been, just like the rest of the crypto market, a little bit down in the dumps. But co-founder Charles Hoskins suggests having Solana as a sidechain which is a separate blockchain connected to the main blockchain for Cardano. And when I first thought this, I thought maybe Charles was playing with the world. And then I dug into it a little bit and maybe he's not. So this happened, I think, in his AMA yesterday or the day before. And his thoughts were basically, so you could take Solana to replace its current consensus algorithm with something 25 times faster and does not collapse all the time, his words, uh, make it a Cardano sidechain. And he's, uh, is Charles only 35? <laughs> Somebody said he's just 35 years of age. Anyway, Solana would then be paid to Cardano holders to maintain it, and they don't have to worry about security anymore. And all those dApps move over, and they get better reliability, security, and they get faster. So this was like, wow, yes, if all of what he says is true, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it just sounds like a perfect utopian nirvana. So let's jump in. First of all, Cardano does already have an EVM sidechain. Now, I don't know if this is live or not. I'd say it probably is, but this is uh, what they had proposed for their uh, Ethereum virtual machine sidechain. And of course, the key thing here is as we go forward, and I won't bore the details, but they had a standalone testnet, a passive sidechain, an active sidechain, and then a main chain deployment. But it, it, we all know, and um, we've been talking about this for a long time, that blockchains cannot succeed in isolation. No single blockchain will transform the entire digital infrastructure for the better, nor will a single block blockchain revolutionize the way we share data, transact, or engage with others virtually. We don't know, but it's probably unlikely there'll be one chain that does it all. There might be one chain that does 80% of what you need, but not necessarily one chain of, that does it all. So IOG, which is the development house of Cardano, they plan to create a family of side chains that will bring greater scalability, interoperability, and programmability to Cardano because they, they do have a couple of challenges. And this could be a way of shoring up some of those gaps. And a number of ecosystem contributors like Solana working on building their own side chains to add even more capabilities to Cardano. Uh, again, they do have their Solidity smart contracts on Cardano. They are now creating EVM compatible dApps. Let me know in the comments below if that's live or not, or if it's being adopted, if it's being used, as well as ERC20 ERC compatible tokens uh, with all their own side chains as well. And this means users will benefit from far lower fees, faster settlement times, etc., And of course, more environmentally friendly environment. Uh, that's kind of the party line. So first of all, let's look at the future of where all of this is going because it's prompted a lot of questions. And this is kind of the future blockchains is cross-chain interoperability. No ifs, ands, or buts. Because like we said before, when you have different blockchains, you could have blockchain A that may have different encryption technique to blockchain B. 
which means that encrypted data from A cannot be understood by B. And apart from encryption, there's so many, so much other stuff going on. Mechanisms work in the background, like consensus algorithms, block sizes, digital signatures, uh, hashing algorithms, uh, so much more. So it's, it's not trivial just to plug them in together. There's a lot of work needs to be done. That being said, a ton of work has been done for quite some time. This slide itself, I used this probably nearly a year ago, and over 40 cross-chain bridges were under development a year ago. A couple of them may have gone by the wayside, but you see uh, names on there that you recognize, like Wormhole, which is a Solana product, Cosmos, they're a whole interchain. Thor chain is there. Um, you have, of course, Ethereum, Polygon, um, Polkadot, you name it. Uh, and then you have different chain agnostic chains like Chainlink are on there too, EVM focused like Connext, and Bridge Galore from Avalanche, Harmony, etc., all the way across. So you can see that this world is already extremely built out. And again, it is the future, but there are risks. So let's give you a couple of examples of L2s and sidechains. But remember, some of these are L2s, some are sidechains. But the main difference between a sidechain and an Ethereum layer 2 solution is that while the layer 2 inherits the security of the main Ethereum network sidechains, sidechains rely on their own security. That is the big, big difference. And an Ethereum sidechain is a separate blockchain network that runs in parallel to the Ethereum main chain. So when you consider that, if you have something like Solana bolting onto Cardano, they, the sidechain would maintain their own security, which is tricky. Whereas you take something like Polygon, that uses the underlying security of Ethereum. So let's look at exactly how sidechains work and what uh, Charles is proposing. So this is a simple example of how sidechains work. And what I did was I layered on a couple of graphics. So this one shows you the blockchain, which would be the underlying blockchain of Cardano, and the sidechain would be Solana. And on the sidechain extensions, there's a couple of things that happen. First of all, there'd be the two-way peg, and the two-way peg of sidechains are developed to facilitate the transfer of digital assets between blockchains, regardless of who is the holder of the assets. And digital assets should be able to be moved without any counterparty risk meaning that no secondary actor should be able to stop the transfer of assets from occurring. And that's kind of the whole two-way pig thing. And beyond that, you've got the smart contracts. I have it there as SCs, pointed at the green little circle. And smart contracts are there to ensure that foul play is minimized by enforcing validators on the mainnet and sidechain to act honestly, confirming cross-chain transactions. And once a transaction has occurred, a smart contract will notify the mainnet that the event has happened. And then finally, you've got the whole interoperability, and that is facilitated by sidechains that would allow users to seamlessly navigate across these various projects. And this is fundamental value of all the sidechains. So that's a quick, quick and dirty look into what I think Charles is kind of proposing. But let's talk about where the world is today. First of all, cross-chain is already happening. Uh, and you see, you've got things like the Solana-based crypto wallet Phantom is expanding to Ethereum Polygon. This news just broke from Tim Copeland. And the wallet will now be competing with the market leader in the space called MetaMask, which is an Ethereum-based wallet. And Phantom is the most popular wallet on the Solana blockchain. It's actually built by a bunch of Ethereum developers who built on the Aux DEX. And it became dominant due to its friendly user experience and ability to show NFTs. And it now has more than 3.2 million active users. And its widespread success on Solana is what makes it one of the most potent threats to MetaMask grip on the market. Now, with Phantom offering token swaps and supporting multiple blockchains, the wallet could theoretically enable cross-chain swaps in the future. And remember, the wallet already offers swaps and staking NFTs and other features. So that is exactly where this is going. And, you know, we've stressed here many, many times that wallets are key to the adoption of blockchain. They gotta be simple, easy to use, and cross-chain capable. And we are getting there, ladies and gentlemen, and that'll have a huge difference to the whole space. In addition, uh, Solana also has Wormhole version two is up and running, and this works across Ethereum, Matic, Avalanche, uh, Phantom, 
and Binance and a few others. So this is big news. And in addition, SVM, which I guess is akin to the Cardano virtual machine, the Cardano EVM. This is the Solana virtual machine. This is built by Neon Labs, and they will be deploying their SEVM, which is their ethereal, Ethereum virtual machine cross-chain EVM solution for Ethereum dApp developers with a toolkit to run their applications or dApps with low gas costs and high speeds on Solana. So this is all happening fit, fast and furious all across the board all the time. So Charles is in the right place and he's going down the right path. Let's talk about a couple of others. Cosmos IBC. IBC stands for Inter Blockchain Communications is probably the most exciting thing about the Cosmos ecosystem is exactly this. And they're building out towards this cross-chain world as we go forward. However, unfortunately, there is one thing missing from IBC. And you can see here, their missing ingredient is stable coins. Uh, you can see all the other chains, Omni, Optimism, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Polygon, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, Tron, Ethereum, they all issue stable coins, but the IBC ecosystem does not do that yet. That's one of the things that's missing. And I know that the Cardano team are looking to issue uh, stable coins as well, which is a critical part, critical ingredients for DeFi in the future as we go forward. So with that, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. I do have a couple of quick conclusions that hopefully will cement it all together with varying points of view. And again, these are kind of what I've picked up from what I know about the space. First of all, the good is having all of this, uh, obviously, inter-blockchain, side-chains, multi-chain, whatever you want to call it, it unlocks interoperability and innovation, which makes it better for users, and it solves real-world problems. So if you're doing a real estate transaction in one chain and you want to turn it into cash on another and trade it for something else, etc., that that is good for the whole space. The bad though, and this this is something that I didn't find and I don't know if it exists, but I call it the pent lemma because we all know what the blockchain trilemma is. So this is the interoperability pent lemma. And if it's a stupid word, let me know in the comments below. Or if somebody has a better word for it, let me know. But this looks at a couple of things like speed, which is the latency to complete a transaction, as well as final guarantees. This has to be quick in this day and age. We're talking under a second. And for it to be cross blockchain, obviously that matters. If you're doing a real estate transaction, maybe you can wait 10 minutes or whatever. But in the real world, speed has to be there to complete that transaction and guarantee finality. Second, is security. And this means trust and liveliness, uh, assumptions, tolerance for malicious actors, safety of funds and reflexivity. This is all critical to cross-chain activities. The uh, third one is connectivity. And this is the selection of destination chains for both users and developers, as well as different levels of difficulty for integrating and additional destination chains as we go forward. The fourth part, which is probably one of the most important parts, is capital efficiency. And that is the economics around capital required to secure the system and transaction costs to transfer assets. Where does that all lie? And how do you convert fees and tokens uh, of the different underlying chains? And finally, statefulness. That's the ability to transfer specific assets more complex states and or execute cross-chain contract calls. Uh, and the final point there, I have multi-chain issues. Some chains have issues, some chains have gaps, some chains uh, are not compatible with one another. And that's what this is all there to overcome, but it is tricky to do, extremely tricky. Now let's talk about uh, a keyword from Charles's uh, friend, Vitalik Buterin. And Vitalik argues that the future will be multi-chain, not cross-chain. And his thoughts are fundamental limits to the security of bridges that hop across multiple zones of sovereignty. And an easy way to think about it is the problem gets worse when you go beyond two chains. What happens if you have three chains or a hundred chains 
and they all end up being dApps with many interdependencies between those chains. And then a 51% attack happens on one of the chains that could create a systematic contagion that threatens the whole economy of chains, the entire ecosystem. And when you think about what Vitalik says, it makes complete sense as we go forward. So let's finally look at a quick chart because no video would be complete without a chart. This is the Solana Cardano pair. Uh, we are back at the levels that this pair was at, coincidentally, September 1st, 2021. That's over 460 days or so uh, since we've been back here. And that was 46.15 Cardano for every Sol. And we are 67% off the high for this particular pair. So shout out to Charles and the Cardano team. And hope you like this. I don't know where it's going to go, but side chains may have their risk, but they have the underlying security, which is a good factor. And uh, we don't know what's going to win. It's going to be interchain, cross-chain, side-chain as we go forward. Either way, connectivity is the future. No one chain can do it all. So with that, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the mods in the chat and all the gracious people out there in the audience. I appreciate every single one of you. Have a good night. Bye.